Dear brothers and sisters, praise the Lord. It's time to read our Bible again. Today we'll continue to read uh, Matthew chapter 6, starting from verse 25. Matthew chapter 6, from verse 16 till the end of the chapter, talk about the kingdom people who still need to live on this earth today. So how shall we deal with the world? Today we still live in the world. We need to eat, we need to clothe, and we have other needs in our lives. Therefore, Jesus used two sections to address this matter. How should the kingdom people have the proper relationship with the world? In the Sermon on the Mount, first from verse 16 to 24, teach us when we have abundant material supplies, we need to learn not to be greedy. From verse 25 to 34, teach us when we are lacking in our material supply, we should not worry. When we read Bible, we must keep them in context. After reading through the whole section, then conclude the main point, what Jesus wanted to say. We should not take things out of context. For example, some people read verse 19, do not store up for yourself treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Then conclude right away that God wants us to spend all we have and we should not save. This is totally not what God meant. In this paragraph, Jesus did not tell us that we shall not store up, but a question of where you should store up your treasure store up on earth or in heaven. And what Jesus really cared was not even a treasure, but because where your treasure is, you, there your heart will be also. So on the one hand, it's about a matter of our heart, and on the other hand, it's a matter about our eyes. If your eyes are single, your whole body will be full of light. If your eyes look at everything, your eyes will be evil because you cannot focus. And eventually, it comes down to who are you serving? For we cannot serve both God and main men. So when you have plenty, we need to learn not to be greedy. If you are greedy, very quickly, these material possessions soon will become your master. It will take up all your, all your energy and attention, will become its slave unconsciously, unconsciously. The following section from verse 25 to the end is dealing with the matter when we are lacking in our material supply. We should not worry. Paul himself gave us a very good example in Philippians chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. It says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things, all this through him who gives me strength. In Paul's life, sometimes he had plenty, sometimes he's in need, sometimes he's well fed, sometimes he's hungry. But he declared, no matter what, he had learned the secret that he could do all things. What secret? Actually, that's what Jesus told us in his Sermon on the Mount. We fix our eyes on Jesus, we single-heartedly serving the Lord. When we have plenty, we store them up in heaven. When we are lacking, we do not worry, we look upon our Heavenly Father's provision. I hope we can all learn from Paul that his secret can become ours too. Verse 25, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? 
We said it earlier. When we re- read Bible, we need to read the whole context. Verse twenty-five starts with "therefore." That means whatever mentioned beforehand will conclude it here. So that means what's being said in verse twenty-five: Do not worry about your life. Do not worry about your body. They have preconditions. What are the preconditions? That is, you have the single eyes. Your whole body is full of light, and you single-heartedly serve the Lord. You do not serve mammon. These are the mindset that a a kingdom people should have. When you have this kind of mindsets and come to the Lord, so the Lord said, "Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, our heavenly." Our earthly life needs to eat in order to live. Eating and drinking are for life, but life is not for eating and drinking. So do not worry about what you will eat or drink, and do not worry about your body, what to wear. Wearing clothes is to cover uh, uh, your body, and your body is not for the clothes. Then Jesus tells us why for. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? We should not take the branch for the root. Life is the root, and food is the branch. Body is the root, and clothes is the branch. What shall we pay attention to? Are the life and body, and not food, nor clothes? Then Jesus gave us an example, verse twenty-six. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more? Are you not of more value than than they? Compared to us, birds are low-level creatures. They don't have rationality. Therefore, they don't know to sow nor to reap nor to store up. But the heavenly Father who created them feeds them. Jesus continued to say, "Aren't you much more valuable than the birds of the air?" Jesus said this was to point out that men are much more valuable than the birds. God gave us rationality, so we know to sow and to reap and to store up the extra into the barns. Some people read this verse and said, "I want to be a bird." Jesus did not want you to be a bird. Jesus meant to say, "You are much more valuable than the bird." Don't throw away the rationality God gave you. With this, we learn to prepare for tomorrow. Jesus' emphasis here is, "Do not worry and not do not prepare." We must know the principle for our whole life is always God gives the rain and men to till the ground. We need to carry out our responsibilities and do what we need to do, even when we are prepared. Sometimes we、we'll、still run into things that's out of our control. When that happens, we should not worry. Think about the birds; they do not sow nor reap nor gather them into barns. Yet our heavenly Father still feeds them and takes care of them. When we become like bird, the birds do not do not sow, do not reap nor store up. We are much more valuable than the birds. Our heavenly Father will surely take care of us. Verse twenty-seven. Which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Our life is in God's hands. How long we'll live? Where will we live? What will we experience? Our heavenly Father had prepared for us long ago. If it's not time, He will not take you away. When it's time, you'll leave, even if you don't want to. We must have this understanding of our Father in heaven. Everything is in His hands. 
Therefore, after we've done what we should do, then we should trust things into God's hands in our prayers. Once we entrust to God how things will carry out, then it's not up to us. It's totally up to God. Then you should not worry about it, for you cannot add one hour to your life by worrying. Do not worry. To some people, it's a difficult lesson. We must know the root for our worrying is that we do not trust our heavenly Father. As we are the children of God, we are much more precious than the birds. If it's not allowed by God, nothing will happen to us. If it's permissive by God, He shall lead us through, for He loves us. To live, we need to eat and drink, but we do not need to worry about what to eat or drink. Verse twenty-eight. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. We need to wear clothes so we look decent and comfortable. But do not worry about your clothes. How did the flowers in the field grow? They do not labor nor spin. Verse twenty nine. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of this. The pronouncement here was very good. Solomon was the king at the most powerful time of the kingdom of Israel. He is also very wise, and lots of foreign kings came to Israel to pay tribute to him. So the clothes he wore must be very splen、uh, splendorous. But Jesus compared his clothes to the flowers in the field. This flower it does not labor nor spin. God even dressed them. Very beautifully, even Solomon in all his splendor could not compare to one of these flowers. Dear brothers and sisters, we must have this understanding: life is the most beautiful thing. Why the lilies are beautiful? Because they are living; they can grow. They must not be contaminated. We must not be contaminated by the world value, chasing. Chasing after the world fashion and see them as our、uh, status symbol. If you have the spiritual side, you'll see that out of nature life is the most beautiful thing. See the flowers around you. Each one is so fine, so pretty. Each one is different. If you are a science major, you use a microscope. To see a ten thousand suit or a one hundred dollar suit, the fiber inside will not much different. On the contrary, if you use high power telescope to see the flowers or leaves or even the glass, you'll see, you'll see their cell structures are so orderly. You can see God's wisdom is far more beautiful than. What man can do, verse thirty. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which to which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the the oven, will He not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Men are more valuable than the birds. Men are also more valuable than the flowers. Our heavenly Father feeds the birds of the air. And dress the flowers in the field, not to mention about us. We are the children of God. We are, we are to become the people of the kingdom of heavens, where will exist eternally. Why do we worry about the temporary things on earth? So Jesus concluded in verse thirty one. Verse thirty one and thirty two. Therefore, do not worry, saying, "What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear?" For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Gentiles they do not know God. They thought they can control everything, 
and therefore they need to worry what to eat or what to drink or what to wear. They also spend all their time and energy on these things. But as the kingdom people, all this that we need to maintain our daily lives, our and our decency, our heavenly Father knew all along. Not only he knew, he also loved us, so he provided for us. Verse thirty three. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Jesus' word here actually was based from verse twenty two and verse twenty four, that our eyes need to be single, only focus on Lord Jesus Christ, and we need to make a decision that we only serve our Lord alone. If you are this kind of person, you are worried what God worries. And pursue what God values. What does God value the most? He values His kingdom the most, and His kingdom is established upon His righteousness. So we need to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness on earth as it is in heaven. Then what we need in our daily lives, He shall give it to us. Verse thirty-four. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Each day has enough wor- troubles of its own. Very interestingly, very interestingly spoken here. Jesus wanted us to pay more attention to today, the good things around us to let、uh, to let us enjoy. If there's difficulties. Then we come before God and ask for His provision. We just need to live each day before the Lord. Tomorrow, tomorrow's things live till tomorrow. Tomorrow shall has its own trouble. When we are willing to seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, Jesus did not promise that we will not have trouble tomorrow, but we shall live today well. Tomorrow shall have tomorrow's trouble or worry, just like Paul in Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-eight and twenty-nine says. Paul testifies, besides all the troubles he suffered himself, he he said, "I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches, who is weak and I do not feel weak." Who is led into sin, and I do not inwardly burn. Paul also worries, but his worries was were for the kingdom of God, was for the people of God. He did not worry for what to eat, what to drink, or what to wear. Dear brothers and sisters, what to eat, what to drink, and what to wear is not important at all. What's important is God's kingdom and God's righteousness can come. Can come on earth. Let's pray. Lord, turn our views and elevate our scale. All our daily needs you knew already. Help us to understand your heart's desire. May your kingdom, may your kingdom and your righteous righteousness come on earth soon. Lord, may you prepare for us our daily lives, so we can become those who hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Pray in Jesus' name, Amen.